Yes, I'm still here, Hollywood. And coming up on today's episode... Tell me about working with Heath Ledger. What a lovely person he was. I have been told, stay away from Heath, he's into the character, oh my God, it's, he's gone. It wasn't like that at all. He was perfectly fine. I am in love with my daughter's work these days. Like I can't, I can't believe how great she's become. Emma Roberts. I'm so proud of her, I can't see straight. You'll have to ask her. Oh. I love my sister, but I can't talk about her. She don't want to talk about it. And also my daughter told me also not, not to talk about her, but I stumbled and do. I'm not supposed to talk about either of them. Okay, but I do. All right. How do you define a Hollywood legend? Is it the number of roles that they've played? Is it reaching over a billion dollars in box office receipts? Is it longevity? This is Still Here Hollywood. I'm Steve Kometko. Join me with today's guest, who has acted in over 700 films, Hollywood legend Eric Roberts. Hi, Eric. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yeah. Thanks for doing this for us. We're just kind of getting off the ground. My pleasure, pal. This is, this is what friends are for. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, I told you I was going to start off with this question. Okay. What possessed you to become an actor? When did the acting bug first bite? Well, actually, it was, it was, it, it, it like started out as a crutch. When I was a little boy, I had a terrible stutter. I couldn't talk to anybody without what, 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 what. And, and, in, and in school, everybody would laugh, you know. And so it was kind of a thing. I was ostracized, you know, for it. And so, uh, but I learned something. When I memorized stuff, I could speak without stuttering. So that's how it started. And then I started to uh, to learn to have you know, fun at it, and then I got good at it, and then I decided, well, this is me. And um, that's why I'm an actor. It was an evolution, of course. It took like 20 years, basically. But, but yeah, that's how it all started. A 20-year overnight sensation. There you go. <laughs> like they say. Um, your parents had something to do with acting as well, correct? My father had a young people's acting school called the Actors and the Writers Workshop funded in part by the Martin Luther King Foundation. And he patterned it after Joe Papp Theater in New York and that we had a showmobile. And all week long, we would tour the underprivileged areas of Atlanta. And then on weekends, we'd have theater in the park, like Joe Papp would have, have a theater in Central Park. And uh, that's how I grew up. That's great. Yeah. Um. I did eight to 12 plays every year of my life from the time I'm like four years old until I left home. Yeah. Are you glad that you took this choice, that you took this path? Do you like being an actor? Uh, I have the best job on the planet. Hey, I used to have the best job on the planet. What was that? Working as an entertainment reporter. I okay. love being out here. And well, I, I, I feel I do have the best job on the planet, and I've seen the planet now a couple, three times for free, you know, because of my job. So I just, I can't say enough great things about being an actor. How about being in Hollywood? Do you like it? Hollywood, Bollywood, it can be anywhere. It's just as long as you're working as an actor and it's either here or New York, that's how it used to be, now it's everywhere. But it was either here or New York when I first started and you had to be one or the other or both and uh, that's how you did it. Um, I saw you once at a Starbucks in Glendale. I was yeah. behind you in line. Did we say hi? No, I wanted to say hi but I was too scared. I was a chicken back scared then. Scared of me? Yes. Um, Scared of my own shadow, to tell you the truth. I'm sorry. What about The Dark Knight? Did you enjoy that film? Oh, are you kidding? Of course. It was, well, let me tell you. We shot all the Chicago stuff in Chicago. Which is and, where I live. Yeah, okay. I love that town. Great deep dish pizza. Then uh, they were supposed to shoot at Pinewood, but that was a lie. We weren't going to Pinewood ever. We we're going 30 miles north of London to the old Zeppelin hangar. Which, which, when you walk into it, if you're a movie geek, which I am, you walk into it, it's all Gotham City. Takes your breath away, and you, you want to cry. You're so happy to be there. It was so cool. Yeah. And it was just fun to be associated with that movie. And, and he's a real director, and he knows what he wants, and he tells you what he wants, and he gave me my favorite direction I ever got. I'm, I'm like doing a scene. And it's, it's with a girl. It's in a bar. And I'm being very, you know, bravotic. And blah, 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 blah. And Chris Nolan says, cut! Really loud, because he's way away from us. Cut! Over the, over the speaker, whatever it was. What's going on? 
Eric Roberts, don't be funny. <laughs> and I knew exactly what he meant. Don't like you playing on the head. And, uh, and so I, but it was just hysterical that God's voice from the, the, uh, the speakers told me not to be funny. And I'm not known for being funny at all. So it was, it was a real pleasure for me to be told that. Tell me about working with Heath Ledger. What a lovely person he was. I have been told, stay away from Heath. He's into the character. Oh, my God. It's, he's gone. It wasn't like that at all. He was perfectly fine. And, uh, in fact, I had five scenes with Batman. Uh, uh, I mean, with, oh, yeah, with, with the Joker. One was with all of us all together. And he's got a three-page monologue. And he walked in the rehearsal for it. It's a, it's a camera rehearsal, and we're all like in our in our in our street clothes, we're all hanging out. We all have our scripts, and he walks out there, and he's going through the monologue, blah blah blah, and he gets to the, the monologue, and he's done with the monologue, and he's done. And he turns to us and he goes, "How am I doing?" <laughs> he's just so charming, so likable, so sweet, so normal, and uh, all the stuff that I heard about him was not true, and uh, he was a lovely person. He was a he was a real loss. But like so many of us, he just had some demons. May I ask about Julia at all? What do you want to know? I want to know how is she. You'll have to ask her. Oh. I love my sister, but I can't talk about her. She don't want to talk about it. And also my daughter told me also not, not to talk about her, but I stumbled and do. I'm not supposed to talk about either of them. Okay. But I do. All right. Eric, tell me, what was your very first film? King of the Gypsies. And uh, it was an open audition. Uh, the... Studio wanted John Travolta because everybody wanted John Tra 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 Travolta in 1978 for everything. <laughs> and, uh, but Frank Pearson wanted an unknown. He also wrote it from uh, Peter Moss's book. He wanted an unknown to play the part. So there was no, no preconceived anything about the character. And uh, so I auditioned five times and I screen tested. And he told you, Dino, that's what I want. And, you know, Dino De Laurenti said, okay. And hence, I got my first movie. Do you have any advice you would give kids who want to come to Hollywood? Oh, yeah. A uh, couple of things that are very important. You have to treat everybody you meet in this industry like they're going to be your boss next week, because they might be. <laughs> and uh, bosses are getting younger and younger. And uh, yeah, the, the thing to remember about fame and about luck and about a success is um, when you have it, you have to share it, and you learn that, and you and you learn it as you as you go through the evolution of, of like being a somebody who is recognizable. Have there been tough lessons along the way learning that? It's not that big a deal. It's not it's not that tough. Uh, the hard part is patience. You have a lot of patience and have used it a lot of times. I mean, you're. I couldn't believe when I read, uh, reading one of the articles about you, that you've had like 725 professional jobs. I lost movies, count of about films. 75. Re yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> multiply that by 10. Well, you know, it was weird. I did, I did one to like four movies a year for the first 20 years I was in this industry. And then they took film and they gave us digital. So everybody who owned a camera became a studio. And so they started calling me direct. And my wife comes to me and says to me, this is in the mid-90s. And she says, you know, you're getting 50 to 70, 30 to 50 offers every day from all over the world. Do, do you want to go pursue this? I said, sure. Let's go have fun. So we did. And I thought it would last a minute. And it's now 2024, and I'm still doing it. So I know. I, I was also surprised to read your career has spanned 50 years. Keep that down. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. We're just about the same age. Mm -hmm. I'm a little older. Well, I'm 38, 39, 40. How and old am I? I'm 42 now. Good for you, man. See, there we go. There we <laughs> Kidding. Go. Um, I'm not. No. <laughs> Is it true you're writing a memoir? Do you have a memoir coming out in September? Well, there's talk about it. You know, uh, yeah, this, this, this man approached me who I... I admire very much and um, said, you want to do this? And I said, well, I'll do it with you. So we started it and uh, we'll see how it goes. How far along are you? Uh, we're in it, you know. Well, 
uh, how far along am I? As far as I'm concerned, I've just begun. Oh. Yeah. Uh, are you candid in it? Candid? I'm honest. Candid, candid, uh, candid sounds abrupt. I try not to be abrupt, but I'm honest, sure. Uh, what is your favorite memory so far of what you've done, of your career? Well, it depends on what category you want to talk about. Like film. Um, like like uh, like a directors of film or experience of film or or falling in love with a character or becoming a character like you know what do you want to talk about falling in love with a character well yeah that well there there was a time like there was a part i played in the 80s uh you know in a movie called the pope of greenwich village and i got that script in january of that year and the book with a note that said pick a part paulie or charlie and so I read the book, I read the script, and I picked Polly, and I called the producers, I picked Polly. They said, we wanted you to pick Charlie. I said, why? And they said, because you know, he's more a straight guy, and he's handsome, he's a leading man, he wears suits, and he's cool. And we thought that was you. I said, how nice of you. Nah, I want to play this weirdo. And they said, okay. But I said, the way, the way that he's written, though, is, um, you know, he's on the nose, you know, kind of a, kind of a New York, you know, wannabe mafioso tough guy kind of cliche. I said, that's been done a million times. I don't want to play that. I want to play it very differently. And they said, whatever you want to do, Eric, you do it. We hired you because it's you. I said, okay, great. So that was January. So I took, and we started started a rehearsal. We had five days of rehearsal at the end of August, and we started to shoot in September. So I had eight months, and I dropped 30 pounds, and I permed my hair, and I became this guy. So that was probably my most fun I ever had becoming something I wasn't. What about Runaway Train? What about it? Did you enjoy that? It was, a, it, was a, it, was, it was the hardest, most intense, on location movie experience I've ever had because of the cold, because of the train, because of the, of the location, Alaska, and because it was a very physical movie. And it wasn't fun, it was hard. But John Voight is a great actor, and John Voight, I never knew how we had nothing in common because I thought he had everything in common because he stayed in character the whole time. He never broke character. I never knew John Voight. I knew the character he was playing. So I love this guy. And then I, and then I, then I found out we have almost nothing in common <laughs> after the movie was over. I said, really? God, I've, I would never have thought that. I treasure him as a co-star, always will. He was so good to me. How so? And in that he was just the actor I needed for the actor he wanted. It, I, I gave, he took. He gave, I took, and we did it. We just had a good-ass time, and we made a good-ass movie. We'll be back for more in a moment. I'm so proud of her, I can't see straight. Since her, her performance in Maybe I Do until right now, she, she overwhelms me with pride. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you'd like to? Yeah, there is. Um, there was talk about it years ago, and then it just vanished. So I did a lot of homework on it because I was interested in the concept. And... I realized I can still play him. I, I can still play him the last 10 years of his life, and that's Nureyev. I want to play him when he stopped dancing. And uh, his life was incredibly huge and incredibly tragic and incredibly poignant and incredibly important, I think, to share his experience. And... Uh, and uh, I did a lot of homework on him. I did a lot of research on how he looked, how he sounded, how he moved, how he... And uh, his, his voice was very in the back of his throat as if he smoked, which he did. And, uh, and he was also, of course, alcoholic, drug addict, everything you can think of. But the way he talked, I love, I love how he talked. And he was very... He had his smoker's talk, you know, how he talked. And I just want to play him desperately. And... Uh, he was a cool cat, and he was very broken, but he was very gifted. 
and uh, I want to play him. Have you ever seen his grave? I have not. You got to look it up. Tell uh, me. Google it. Help he, me. He has, uh, it's in, I don't know if it's directly in Paris or in a suburb of Paris, but uh, I have kind of a fascination uh, with the way people are buried and where. And uh, in fact, I want to get over to Forever Hollywood Cemetery to see Judy Garland's grave. Um, I've done that. Have you? Yeah, it's cool. I was over there before that it was all set up and interesting. Anyway, uh, Nureyev is buried in or near Paris, and his tomb looks like a Asian rug, not unlike something like this. And it's all done with mosaics, with the folds in it. Like Tiles? It's, yes, like it's uh, laid over a, a, a casket. It is spectacular. I can't wait to go see yeah. it sometime. Thank you for telling yeah, it's, me. It's really something. And it, I think it says a lot about the man, too, yeah. uh, you know, that he wanted to be remembered that way. Um, what would you do about the physical stuff? You, you would play him after? Oh, yeah, because I don't have those legs. <laughs> he, I mean, he and, he and uh, Beryzhnikov had you know, the legs of the 20th century. Yeah, no, I can't do that. You know, I was, uh, I was invited once to see the American Ballet Theater here when, I think it was the American Ballet Theater, when uh, Nureyev was the artistic director. And they weren't drawing very well in Los Angeles at, at that time. And I was introduced to the conductor. And he said, why don't you come down? And I, I took my sister down. She was visiting me. And um, <laughs> after it was over, he said, come back and I'll introduce you to Nureyev. Ah. Or to uh, Barishnikov. Wow, cool. And, and I walked in with my sister. <laughs> and all I saw were these buns <laughs> of steel, you know, in white tights. And I just thought to myself, wow, is that what dancing does for you? And my sister, of course, her jaw dropped. Uh, and it was very interesting to meet him and to, to see him. And the conductor told me, uh, because he was draw, trying to draw, drum up some business, uh, Barishnikov, uh, he went on stage. He wasn't scheduled to, but uh, he did. And, and the conductor said, you saw something very special today. And it was. I, I remember that um, dance, the, the dances they did. And he was spectacular. I've got a Barishnikov story for you. I'm working for Bob Fosse. And we became very star close. eighty, right? Star eighty. We 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 became very close. We were together for uh, for three months. You know, before we ever shot a frame of film, we just just doing homework together, and research. Anyway, and we told some personal stories to each other. And one story he told me was about he was madly in love with uh, with Jessica Lange. He was in love with her. He said, and that's how he put it. I was in love with her. Where it breaks your heart already. And you're like, what happened? Well, well, you know. I dance a lot, you know. I like when I'm celebrating and when I feel good, do a little, little, a little jig, you know, blah blah blah, and blah blah blah, and and you know, we're dating and blah blah blah, and um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, I'm the kind of guy that you know, if we have a great you know lovemaking session, I might do a little dance. I don't know, <laughs> you know, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, or it's a good dinner, I might do a little dance. I don't know, I'm that kind of guy, blah blah blah, and so uh, I ask her, how about Sunday afternoon and she, she says, you know, you know, you're going out for five or six months. How's, how's your Sunday? I'm sorry, I'm busy. You're busy? With what? I, I, I have a date. I have a luncheon. Wow, with who? Barishnikov. No, with, uh, with Misha. Well, I didn't know who Misha was. I said, well, I thought it was a girl. <laughs> I said, well, you know, call me when you're done. Anyway, it turned out that it was, you know, Barishnikov. I never danced for her again. <laughs> I love that story. That's Fosse saying that? I, yeah. I never danced I for her. I never danced and for her again. He was quite a dancer himself. Well, I, he, uh, I, but Choreographer, I, director. He was not Barishnikov. No, I suppose not. Um, I suppose not. What gratifies you most about being an actor? Uh, what gives you the most satisfaction? It's an interesting question because there is something very specific in the outcome of the endeavor, but it's kind of indefinable. And it's just a sense of satisfaction. And it's a sense of well-being. And a sense of trust in your understanding of yourself and your relationship to things and people. And it comes through the work. And you're the work, you know, when you, when, you, when you play the kind of people I play, sometimes you have to really work to find them and, uh, and to present them 
properly so it's not a caricature because I play very extreme people and if you're not careful it's a caricature and uh, so you have to be very careful and uh, uh, but the question was what gratifies you the most uh, is is the outcome of it is like crossing a finish line every day ah yeah I made it uh, because it's tenuous and it's also precious and it's also personal and it's also yours so you're like you're like sharing it but you're also out there to be shot at <laughs> quite quite literally that would be intimidating sometimes Bob uh, Bob Fosse got me over um, being basically scared of anything <laughs> Why? How? I just, I, I just experienced it all with that man. Yeah. And I just... Uh, was he yeah. tough? Yeah, he was very tough. He made, he made Mary cry the first day on the set. Really? Dude, what are you doing? Make Mary every hour for makeup, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> he was rough. I suppose you have to have hard times in some de to some degree in order to... Oh, it's all relative. You know, hard times are... War and starvation. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, look what's going on in Ukraine. Right. I mean, I mean or in Gaza. Those are hard times. I have a great life, dude. Always have, and I, I, I am. I know how really lucky I am. I know how really good my life has been and is. I have the marriage of a lifetime, and I am happy. <laughs> Eliza seems very nice talking on the phone yesterday. She's my hero, pal. She's uh, very relaxed and in charge. You get that impression from her. She knows what she's doing, where you're concerned. She's my boss. How long have you been married? 31 years. I like her. <laughs> I, I would think so. <laughs> if you've been with her that long, you, it, it helps to like them. Um, <laughs> What would you say is the best memory from your career so far? Would you say it was uh, what you told me about the um, the working with Fosse and well, as far as the intense getting to know John Boyd, the intense creation part of it, uh, the hardest job I ever had was you know when they were with Fosse, you know playing this guy who was not likable, but easy to uh, to um, caricature him. So we really worked hard not to and. Uh, so that was probably the hardest and most rewarding because it was so difficult. But the most fun is a tie between mini movies, King of the Gypsies, Runaway Train, It's My Party, The Pope of Greenwich Village, Love is a Gun, and Purgatory. Those experiences, and they're completely different personalities, characters, clothing, everything, hair, everything is different about all those characters. But those, it was like a paid vacation, those movies. I just have never had more fun or had more satisfaction, except really in my personal life with my wife, than those six experiences. You may not know this, but uh, I had a small part in It's My Party. Cool, who'd you play? I didn't play anybody other than myself. You I were was, there. I was a newscaster, and you hear my voice at the beginning of the movie, and I think at the end. Well, cool. I <laughs> love that movie. My, yeah, yeah. And I'm my, so proud of that movie. My name is like, I think, the last in the credits. But it's there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, and it completed my Hollywood experience oh. to some degree. Cool. Um, is there a lot of actors, I've noticed, uh, are able to point to another actor uh, who they admired and who they make a point of seeing their movie or watching their work you know, some people talk about Harrison Ford or Spencer Tracy comes up a lot. Is there anyone in particular that you've admired? You know, whenever you're asked that kind of question, and if, if you name one person, you're going to leave out two. Mm. It doesn't really work to answer that question. But the, the way I can answer it and be honest about it is I am in love with my daughter's work these days. Like, I can't, I can't believe how great she's become. Emma Roberts. I'm so proud of her. I can't see straight. Since her, her performance in Maybe I Do until right now, she, she 
overwhelms me with pride and just, oh my God, here she goes again. And I'm just so happy to be her dad because she's kicking ass and I'm so proud. Did you have anything to do with that? Absolutely nothing. Nothing? Except I gave her that name. <laughs> Speaking of names, I just found out today, I never knew this, that um, the, the doll, Barbie, its last name is Roberts. I had no idea either. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> sure. Wow. How cool is I that? I saw a story on the news today uh, when I was watching it this morning um, that her last name, her middle name is uh, Priscilla or Pen Penelope uh -huh. and, the, and Barbie, Barbara. Oh, no, it was Barbara Millicent Roberts. Wow. Who knew? Wow. A little, a little Scottish in there, maybe. Huh? Maybe. Millicent. Hmm. Um, Barbie ought to do pretty well at the Oscars, I think. Uh, how was the Oscar suite yesterday? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Was it? It's not like it used to be, though. Back in the days, back when I was a young man, uh, you would go to those things, and you'd walk out with a bag worth two to fifteen thousand dollars, maybe more, maybe five to twenty thousand dollars worth of stuff in your bag. Now you walk out with five or eight hundred bucks worth of stuff, and it's fine. It's great to get free stuff. Everybody loves that, even 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 those of of mankind who were who were loaded love to get free stuff. But it's not the same. It's it's a little it's a little dime storish now, as opposed to extravagant. I uh, I had the pleasure, the experience of the Oscar Suites twenty years ago when I was here. And you're right, it was almost embarrassing the amount of stuff they gave you. Yeah, it was weird. But it you was hate like, you, you don't want to say no. I so, got I got a thousand dollar watch once. Like what? Yeah, sure, Eric, go ahead. What? I was like, wow. I love watches. What's next for you? Well, actually, what's smarter to, to do than ask me is, is to go to imdb.com because they know stuff about me that I forget. Oh, yeah, that's right. So um, ask them because I'm horrible with titles. Ask them and they'll tell you everything. Looking at your IMDb page, which I did, and seeing how many credits you have to your name, one of the things I was surprised to read was student films that you had acted in student films. My wife is my manager. What do you want to know about it? Well, I'm just, it seems surprising to me because you're a big name. You have all this stuff to your credit. And a student I just film. love this question. My wife is my manager. And sometimes, you know, I get, honestly, 30 to 50 offers every single day. So there's a lot of reading to do. And I have these two readers who read all my stuff. And they write synopsises. And they, have, and they have a good pile and a bad pile. And I read all the synopsis, all the bad ones too. I love, I love reading about bad movies. I just love it all. And, uh, but you know, when I read a good s synopsis, I read the script. And if I like the script, I'll have, I'll have my wife book it. Okay, so um, sometimes we get a student film and they can you know, pay me whatever it is, you know, nothing. And, uh, but I always show up because you know, my wife likes, you know, the filmmaker. Or I like the, Synopsis, <laughs> and uh, so we we go help, and it, it's a little bit of giving back. But you know, I'm not I'm not like a saint, and I'm not like a like like a martyr. But it's just it just works that way. I think that's uh, really terrific because I've always thought, um, you know, when when a young reporter would come up and ask me, uh, an in, an intern or uh, an associate, and uh, ask, what advice do you have for me? And my advice was always take absolutely everything you can get and you'll you'll take something away you'll learn something that you didn't think you'd need to know and down lo and behold down the road it it comes in handy so and work leads to work yeah always has always get will. your foot in the door yeah yeah thanks again eric of I course appreciate it. peace out peace out Still Here Hollywood is a production of the Still Here Network. All things technical run by Justin Zangerly. Theme music by Brian Sanishin.